right inside the house with the dead parents. They actually found the two daughters and the son playing with the bloody dead body of their mother inside the house. We got paid. So I explained to her what happened. I told her, I said, we didn't do the kids. She got pissed. She said the order was to kill everybody. I mean, when she said everybody, it means everybody. And I said, yeah, I made the decision to leave the kids alone. Why? I said, they're just babies. But after Janet Castro, you know, when the baby got killed, I guess she got used to after that, you know, killing kids. She liked to be at war. Every day, she was talking about it. We gotta get so-and-so, we gotta get so-and-so, we gotta get rid of him. It was just, it was something that she enjoyed. She was a World War Pop woman here, and he used to be in the force for Griselda years back. Apparently, he ripped her off, and he went on his own, and he declared war on Griselda. Homicide investigators learned several weeks ago that a big shipment of cocaine worth several million dollars from Colombia never arrived here. Police say it was headed to New York City. And that's one thing that she, she didn't forget or forgive. So I go to New York to kill everybody that was working for Papa Mejia, all his crew. Broke all their rules there too. The words that the person that I spoke to was there was gonna be a bloodbath. From the stashers to the hitman, 11 people. They all got killed. 11 people. <laughs> In less than 24 hours. We were supposed to be 12, but I let one go. Homicide detectives are now contacting New York police to investigate any similarities between any drug hits in the New York area and the recent drug assassinations here in South Florida. They won a war. So we saw took the first step. We are now at the Mall of the Americas, which back in 1981 was called the Pan American Mall. So we get to the mall. I set up all the cars where we want them at. This is the scene of the Octavio Mejia homicide. He was Papo's father. Basically, when Mejia left the shopping mall, they ambushed him, and he was shot numerous times by several different gunmen. A lot of people was pissed because they claimed that he wasn't part of the war between Papo and Grisola. So more people flip on Grisola. She created more enemies, which she didn't give a shit. She liked that. What I didn't know, his son was there, Papo. He was in the car while his father went in the mall. I was pissed off because I missed him. I'm going to get him a different way. Somebody had tipped us off. He had a new house in Killian Parkway. So Grisola says, you're not gonna miss this time, are you? I said, no, I'm gonna blow the whole house up. She said, what are you talking about? I said, I'm gonna put a bomb, kill everybody. And I got about 200 sticks of dynamite. <laughs> that goddamn explosion was so loud. First thing we looked was the roof coming out of the house. The house came apart and uh, the neighbor, all, all his windows were busted, the cars around the neighborhood, all the windows were busted. I just want to get to the good news that they found somebody in there. Turns out I missed again. The house was empty. This is just one more, you know, skirmish in the Griselda Blanco, Mejia, you know, conflict. Two weeks later, they had just gotten word that Papa Mejia was on the next flight to Miami, and he's by himself. Griselda, she says, oh, well, we're gonna get him at the airport. You are. She reached on the one of the tables and stuff, and hands me a bayonet, 16-inch bayonet. She said, I want you to kill him with this. She want him stabbed to death. I said, what's this? Change styles or something, you know? They call him the pig. She want him killed like a pig. She offered me a half a million dollars. She said, yeah, but you have to get him inside. I said, no, I don't go inside the airport. She said, why not? I said, no, it's a suicide mission. I don't do suicide missions. Max Marmelstein and Riverita both strongly advised against this bizarre hit. I'm not going into the airport and stab this guy to death because I want to go to jail. Got to get somebody else. She said, oh, well, I got somebody else. I said, who? She says, Miguel. Miguel Perez Miguelito. Well, Miguelito is kind of like Rivy with no class. I mean, Miguel told me one day if, he had, if the money was right, he would walk up to the White House and kill the president. This is a picture that was taken of him shortly after he, he arrived here in 1982 on the Mario boat lift. He was one of the scariest guys I've ever really encountered in my career. That's when they got the reputation of Marilitos. Fearless Marilitos. He was more physically intimidating. He was bigger than Rivy, stronger physically than Rivy. He's the kind of guy that you look at and you think to yourself, you know, this guy can snap any moment and uh, go off and probably just snap your neck. I talked to Miguel, he was all for it. He said, yeah, I'm gonna do it. You know, they're gonna give me $250,000 plus a house to get him inside the airport. I told Miguel, I said, if you go in there, I won't back you up. But Miguelito just said, screw it, and he went and did it. The only thing I'm gonna do for you, I'm gonna show you the pop -up point him out to you. They knew what flight he was on when he was arriving, and they were here waiting for him. 
So sure enough, here comes Pop. Last thing he expected was a, a nigger to hit him. And as he walked out from customs, a man came up with a bayonet. Miguel's coming from behind him, puts him choke on, picks him up, and starts stabbing him. With a bayonet, several times. I counted six or seven. I mean, everybody in the airport was like, with their mouths open, like this. Because everybody's in shock, nobody's saying nothing. Drops on the floor, and he takes off running. That's when everybody starts screaming. Police, of course, ran to the area where this person was stabbed. They pointed out the direction that Miguel had fled in, and within moments, uh, you know, caught up with him. Finally, the officer tackles Miguel. He lands about three feet away from me. And Miguel's looking at me like saying, help me, you know, with his eyes. When I just shook my hand, I said, uh-uh. That's not that I could do. It was police officers coming from every, every direction. They took him to custody, and we just left. This is really over the top, because this place, even back then, pretty much crawls with police. There are police on every concourse. And to attempt something like that, is, it's insane, really. And uh, obviously, it turned out that way because he was caught. But that's the kind of person that Miguelito was. He just, he didn't care. He had a job to do, and whatever it takes, you gave him a guy to kill, and, and that's what he did. But Papo survived the stabbings. And Miguel, he was eventually convicted of attempted murder, sentenced to, I believe, 15 years. That's the last time I saw Miguel. That was the last overt act I know of as far as the Mejia Griselda Blanco war. Griselda Blanco was the catalyst for the recognition by the United States government that Miami had a serious problem, that, that we were really a Dodge City. It was out of fucking control. Believe it or not, when people start getting shot or getting killed, a lot of heat comes from it. You had this goose that kept laying golden eggs. Why mess it up? And that was all because of the violence. It wasn't because, you know, there were so many drugs coming. They didn't have a clue as to how many drugs were coming. They started forming special groups. A special anti-narcotics detective squad known as Centec 26. I mean, I had guys chasing me. I never, you know, who the hell, what do you, you know? I don't even know who these people were. You know what I mean? Where'd they come from? Prosecutors expect more arrests of drug dealers in the near future. Reagan had been elected. We need to get the president to come to Dade County to talk to the widow of a taxi cab driver whose head's been blown away. The cocaine wars, the level of violence, the, the homicide rate, the cover of time, Paradise Lost, led to action. Vice President Bush's task force on violent crime in South Florida flooding Miami with federal agents. It is a joint operation with uh, the state people, local police officials, Coast Guard, Customs. South Florida cannot be a haven for criminals, for sophisticated and organized drug traffickers, for hired assassins. Finally, the rest of the United States was waking up to it that it was not a Miami problem. It was a national problem. This initiative will bring together all our resources to combat the major drug traffic and the crime problems of Miami. After they sent a telegram to the president imploring him to put Homestead Air Force Base on a war footing to intercept, stop, and shoot down if necessary. Drug-laden, clandestine aircraft and vessels which are trying to smuggle narcotics into Florida. We have an unidentified vessel just west of West End, Grand Bahama. Can you send an aircraft out to visually ID him? I have received authorization from the government of Colombia to fire into your vessel. Right to 160, aye. Please, please, stop, stop. Tell him to stop and I will stop. Get hit. Got smoke, got smoke. And agents say their dockside test confirms they got a ton of cocaine worth $31 million wholesale, a cool billion on the street. The amount of drugs that was seized uh, in this area has gone up 2,500%. The net weight appears to be somewhere around 3,700 pounds. It's by far the largest seizure ever made by the federal government.